Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So in this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can do auto labeling of our images. So if you want to use a custom data set to train different types of object detection models, we can now use RoboFlow. They have a fully automated annotation tool. You just have to write in a prompt and then it's going to find all the objects in your images. So I'm going to run you through an example here. We're going to take one of the data sets that we're familiar with. We're going to throw it into RoboFlow and make it annotated by itself. So it's using the grounding dino foundation model under the hood, where it's basically used to extract both the bounding box and also the class label. You just need to prompt it to start with. We're also going to take a look at that. So let's just jump straight into RoboFlow. I'm going to show you how we can set up a new project, upload our images and so on. So I just have this cop data set, which we have seen in all the other videos. And once we have the data set in here, we've done the auto labeling, auto annotations, you can directly use the other videos and the other scripts to train both like YOLV8, YOLV9, YOLV7 and so on. And then you can use it in your own applications and projects. There's now just create a new project here. I'm going to show you everything from scratch. So basically like how you can set up the whole pipeline and auto annotate your images. So right now let's just call it cop auto dataset. There we go. And we want to detect cops again. We will have multiple different cops, but again, let's just try to detect a single cop in our image. Now we need to choose the project type. We're going to go with object detection, but you can also do classification, instant segmentation, and key point detection. And we pretty much have videos covering all of these types here on my channel. We can also see here that you can do semantic segmentation, but let's now go in and create a public project. There we go. And then I have some images that we can directly upload. You don't really have to do anything. Just upload your images, throw it into the auto labeling tool. You can also assign it to different team members and so on, where you can go in and annotate the images yourself. So I'm going to show you that in a second. But right now, let's just, I have a data set here with a bunch of images. We have 66 images. We're going to have it auto labeling this in just a few seconds. So I'm basically just going to drop all the image files directly in here. And we can see like a preview with these thumbnails. Right now it's already uploaded, so we can hit save and continue. So now it's going to upload the files. It will just take a couple of seconds. We can follow the process and we should be good to go. So here we can see we have this new feature with auto label. Right now it's in beta, but it's using large generalized models to automatically label images. And again, it's using grounding dyno under the hood. So it's just like a foundation model, which has been trained on a large scale data set. Then we can use that to actually go in and create our annotation. So we can train smaller models, which can run significantly faster when we're doing inference and so on. So it will both be faster, but it will also be cheaper to run. And when we're fine tuning it on our own custom data set, it will be significantly better. We also have the RoboFlow labeling here and we can also like manually label it as we do in all the other videos. But let's now try out this new start auto label. Let's try to hit it. So welcome to auto label, iterate on prompts. So right now we can actually like just throw in a prompt and it's going to find that with the grounding dyno. Use colors, shapes and sizes. Again, you can also throw that into the prompt as well. Treat it like a 10 year old. So this is just the exact same way as if you're using chat TVT and so on. So we can also adjust the confidence score directly in here if there's some missing detections or if it's over detecting the objects and the classes that you want to have in your data set. Could be that you have 50 of the same classes in the same image, and it can probably only find 10. Then you can lower the confidence score, but make sure when you act like adjust the confidence score, that is what it's going to use, and also what it's going to use for the annotations later on when you go into the review stage. So here we can see that review is key. After the foundation model has processed images, we have our auto labeled data set. Then we can go in and review it. We can either approve it or decline the annotations. We can always go in and edit the annotations, the bounding boxes, go in and manually label it as well. Right now, let's we'll just hit get started. Now we can see that we have our different classes. Let me just zoom one time out. So we have the grounding dyno model up here at the top. We also have grounding SAM, but it's coming soon. So this is pretty cool. Let's now go over. We have our class name. Let's just throw in cup. And here for the prompt, we're also just going to have cup. So for the prompt here, you can also specify like size, colors, shapes, and so on. But right now we just want to detect an arbitrary cup. We could probably even try with like an orange cup or like the yellow cup here and try to see if it's actually able to just do that. Let's just try that to start with. So yellow cup. And here we're just going to call it yellow cup as well for the class. There we go. And we can even go in and add another class. So let's just test out different scenarios here. We can always go back and just detect the standard cup. So right now um, let's call it white cup. And we're just going to specify the exact same prompt here as well. So now we have two classes. We have our test images. We can just go in and 
tested on that, so generate test results. So we go in, throw in a couple of examples just to see how our model performs. We can go in and adjust the confidence score and so on before we actually use our credit to label our whole data set. So this is pretty cool. Again, we get this preview with the auto labels before it actually processes all of it. So right now we can see that it actually get the yellow cup here, also the white cup. Let's try to lower the confidence score for a white cup to see if it's actually like able to detect the other one over here as well. There we go. Now we can actually see if we get more detections. So if we have two low confidence scores, it's actually just going to get all the cups. Let's try to do the exact same with the yellow. So the yellow one is just the single one here, so it doesn't really matter too much with the confidence score unless we actually like just have it too high, but around like 30, 40 is normally fine. So right now, I'll just try to do it with this confidence. And again, you can go in and edit all the classes and so on. So now we actually have everything. We can just directly go in, hit auto label with this model. It's going to auto label our whole data set. Again, if you're just doing this, if you just have like a single classes that you want to detect, it will take a couple minutes to set up. You just hit auto label with this model. It's going to do everything for you. You can export the model, use it in your own custom Python script or in a Google Colab notebook to train YOLV7, YOLV8, YOLV9 and so on. So I'm definitely sure that they're going to add instance segmentation. So you can go in and act like have mask as well directly from um, grounded SAM here. So grounded dyno is for zero shot object detection where down here we actually get the segmentation mask from segment anything. So that's going to be pretty cool. And again, then we can get these polygon labels, but right now we only have optic detection. You can even go to connect your own models here as well. If you have like models available with the RoboFlow API and so on. So right now we got an error. Let's just go back. Let's just delete these classes here and let's just call the cup. There we go. We have the class. We can also go in and change the different like test images that we want to use. But right now, let's just generate the test results again and let's process our whole data set. So right now, it's just adding some auto label magic. There we go. Now we have to take all the cups again. If we actually like, have to go in and do manually, it will take some time also because we have 66 images. But let's now hit auto label with this model. There we go. We can see how many credits you have available. You can always go in and add credit, but this will save you a significant amount of time. And the bounding boxes is fairly nice spot on, especially if you have multiple classes that will probably take a lot of time. Also, if you want to do instant segmentation, just adding every single point in the polygon mask. Grounding dyno, 66 images. We use one credit per image. Let's just hit start auto label and it will do everything for us. We can see that it has started this annotation job. You can also upload more images. You can manually label it as well, but this should just take a couple of seconds. So right now we can see that it processes it one by one. So six annotated right now, and we have 60 images unannotated. So let's just let it run. There we go. Now we can see that it goes pretty fast, probably some batch processing. We can start to get a preview over here to the left. And we should be good to go in just a second. We can go in and export a data set. First of all, we need to verify, go into like the verification step and the process. So now we can see that our annotation job is done. We can now go inside the preview. There we go. And we have to do 66 images to do to verify. We can also just directly go in and improve all we get these um, previews with the thumbnails. So we can basically just go over it looks fine. Like here we get a false detection, you can just go inside that individual image, you can reject it, approve it, or you can go in and modify the bounding boxes here as well. So right now, let's just go in and delete it. And now we can improve it. Let's go back again. We can just go through them. Rest of them looks fine. You can even see the cup here in the background. So if I just go inside this one, it acts like it takes the cup here, even though it's almost fully occluded. Let's just approve that as well. We can also go in and reject it. So right now we want to reject it because we don't have the, the cup in the background, but we can always go in and add our own labels. There we go. Let's just reject it. Now we can see that it's rejected. And we're just scrolling through all of it. Let's now hit approve all. They are now approved. There we go. Add approve to data set. Now we need to choose our train validation and test split. Let's just go with the default values here. Add images, inserting images to data set, and we're good to go. So this is how easy it is to also label your data set, your own custom data sets with RoboFlow now. You just need to upload the images, prompt it, it will do the auto labeling. You can then export data set, use it to train a ULV8 model, ULV9 model in Google Colab Notebook. I have notebooks for all of that, so definitely check those videos out. So now we have our data set, we can go down and generate a new version. We resign it to 640 by 640. There we go. We can also add annotation steps. So right now let's do some flip. We can both do horizontal and vertical flip. And we can also do cropping. And we can also do rotation here. And we can also change like how much we want to do. 
both for rotation, zoom effect and so on, which is pretty cool if you want to have your model generalize a bit better or if you don't have enough data for your model to converge. So right now we said no usable image found. You just have to click one more time, apparently a bug. And here you can choose like how many X you want to do um, data augmentation for. So let's now hit create, let's create a data set and then we can export data set using in our own Google Colab notebook. So we'll just take a second here. There we go. Now we can either train our model directly with RoboFlow. If you have some credits available, you can also do a custom train, upload it to do inference. Let's just export our data set. We can choose a different format. So YOLV9, YOLV8 for our in bounding boxes, YOLV8, YOLV7, pretty much all the different formats are covered in here. Let's just go with YOLV8. You can either download a zip folder to your computer or show the downloadable code. Let's just do that. It's zipping the file. Then we'll get a code snippet that we can copy and paste it directly wherever we want to use it. If it's a custom Python script or in a Google Colab notebook or any other notebook that you're using for training your model. So this is the code snippet that you're going to get. You can just hit copy, use it in your own custom applications and projects. So I hope you have learned a ton of this video here, guys. Definitely go in and check this tool out. It will save you a significant amount of time. You can take your own custom data set, just take images with your phone, web camera, and so on. If you want to try to do the whole computer vision pipeline, generate your data set, upload your data set into RoboFlow, just prompt it to be able to annotate it. Sometimes it's very time consuming and also very boring to annotate our images. And it only takes a few minutes using this auto annotation tool from RoboFlow. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And I hope to see you in one of the upcoming ones. Until then, happy annotating.